Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Indigo Tarot Odyssey. If you're new, welcome to our channel. I specialize in pick a card reads. And if you're our, one of our regulars, hello, you guys. I am ready in your Christmas attire. Thank you very much for all your sweet, sweet messages and comments this morning. One made me cry in particular. Um, it was so wonderful. This girl just said, um, why is it when I see you sometimes on camera, I get tears in my eyes. You're like a sweet mother angel or something to that effect. And I just had a meltdown. Like the love is so intense and wonderful with you guys. You're so sweet and adorable and giving and learning and growing and expanding and everybody is like elevating this time of the year. I can feel it in your messages and also the private reads. Um, a lot of you are coming back for the next building block and stepping stone because you do, you have the big picture now. And sometimes it can be a little scary, right? You're like, whoa, did I just see that or witness that or whatever? I'll give you an example this morning when I was getting ready. Sometimes when I have a lot of fun and we do the birthday special and this and that and the crowns and I have to, you know, get the hair and the makeup and stuff and it gets fussy and I have animals and children. So stuff always goes off kilter. And Ian, of course, is trying to set up the technical. I was about to have a meltdown just because it was like that. Not, uh, just the cats were playing with all the makeup brushes and everything was going mental. And um, also, I didn't sleep well because the cats were going nuts. And then right when I thought I was going to go into meltdown mode on Ian, just because he was like, are you almost ready? And I had just started getting ready. I heard the crows outside my window and it like brought me back down. So that's part of our, um, you know, our in interior tapestry. And we decided to just keep it together and go with the flow and not make anything too, too much. Like I watched this wonderful girl on YouTube the other morning saying why she took a break from it. And it's because she placed so much importance on how she was trying to look and this and that. And like people that were trolling and saying mean things. So my whole purpose of this is always going to be the message and deliver it. And sometimes it's fun to have a little, um, majesty and dress up time, but I'm never going to take it so seriously. It's always about the message. And, um, Ian, actually, we were discussing some topics and he said, well, um, you're really interested in past lives and your past lives and you can have pretty good recollection at times. So why don't you do a past life reading and sort of how it's affecting us now? Because I'm sure each one of you have an aspect of history or something that really attracts you, right? Um, whether it's Greek history, mine is definitely Celtic, Roman, um, Aztec, um, the times of um, the pharaohs over in Egypt, some of those things, and and also um, World War II, like um, in the concentration camps. Like I have crazy, I don't know if it's because I studied it, but I have a, like an intense fascination with that and um, just the human spirit aspect of that and all that. So this is how, how we're going to make our choice today. Okay, excuse my ramblings. I'm like trying to get comfortable in this new setup. It's a little um strange. Like I can hardly move the table. It's like chin high. I'm like forget it. So we're going to choose by our goddesses today or our gods. So our first one is Donna. And I'm not even going to act like I can see all the little things. So I'm going to put on my glasses. I hope you're all doing well and you're having a nice weekend. I'm pretty subdued because my cats are crazy and they don't allow me to sleep. You have divine knowledge that can help others through your spiritual teaching. So that's going to be number one. I don't know if it's Donna or Dana. I'm thinking it's um, Donna. Hathor, receptivity. Um, allow yourself to receive. This will increase your intuition, energy, and ability to give others. I love all the ancient goddesses, right? They're amazing. And Guinevere, the romantic stirrings in your heart have propelled the universe to deliver great love for you. This time of the year, too, a lot of you are receiving um, nice soul connections in the new year. You've, you've already been putting in the hard work and now you're manifesting it. So next is Vesta Home. Your household situation is improving, either through a move or a healthy change. On the occupants, my son is in the hallway staring at me like I'm from outer space. I'm like... Yeah, because that's normal. My mom and a crown eating Cheerios on the counter on a Saturday with a bunch of camera equipment. That's the norm. And Kali, ends and beginnings. The new, what is it? Oh, the old must be released. Released, So the new can enter. And that's one of the biggest messages I've been hearing lately because I definitely hang on to things. I hang on to, um, I love, um, I'm very nostalgic, but also if you, if you're clogged up emotionally in your heart space in all those areas, it's very hard for you to allow in the new and allow in the, um, 
the new love, the new opportunities, because, um, lots of times we don't even know we're doing it, but we dwell, right? And when we're dwelling in the past, um, we're not present. And that's the magic of being in the present is really, really absorbing what's happening every moment. How great something tastes, how beautiful music sounds, how lovely a fabric feels using all of our senses, right? Absolutely. So we're going to start over with Donna, the high priestess, and we're going to get a look at your past life and how it affects you now. Because also, like a lot of times, if you were a soldier, you can be very militant, right? Very organized. I, I find I have certain behaviors, like I'm wearing this crown because I really sometimes I will just take over an event. If I feel there's no leadership, I'm not afraid to do that. I know how to govern um, events and to make things flow and to do it fairly and to have equal distribution and how to protect and all these things. So definitely in my past life, and I've had other readers tell me this too, that, um, you know, I've been very high born and been like a leader, a, a female leader of troops, um, in, in Celtic areas, you know, um, just, and I remember fighting. I remember all kinds of things. I remember like a call to arms and, um, being really scared for the people that were around because yeah and there were other and and you know there was uh super imminent danger in trying to protect all the boundaries uh, that were in the sort of um realm that we all lived in and stuff it was really weird and sometimes you know we think oh my god is that a dream what is that but i remember vivid um fabrics and tapestries and I remember my room being so ornate and everything being purple and blue and I remember just having all these gems everywhere and everybody waiting on me but we were like friends and when um, my mother or um, the elders weren't around we were all just very friends and relaxed about it and I would give away dresses and food and do all this stuff but I remember being in charge of a lot of things and then my parents passing on and me have to take over so it was really really weird anywho so we're going to get on to this number one she wolf so unleash the wild within. So in that, I love that because the messages of that, um, that, that speaks to everything, right? Primal urges. Um, I don't even need to read from this because um, your main card is um, coming up. That's about um, just knowing instinctual, you know, that's like being an excellent hunter or huntress, being able to know when your clan is hungry or in need of food. And it's that primal urge to go get it without fear, because in the day before, you know, um, the the industrial revolution and all that. And um, there was danger everywhere. I mean, wherever you go, of course, there were bears, there were wolves, there were stuff. So um, people were extraordinarily physically fit because they had to run and it was hunter gatherer societies and stuff like that. So every once in a while, you'll get that flip back and feel like you're in that arena and you'll be like, whoa, I'm in the upper world. These are the only ones I really need to read from the book because they're so beautiful and um, they're very, they're very um, powerful. And I love them. Uh, these are, this is Colette Baron Reed's stuff. It's funny. If I seem a little awkward or stiff, it's because I'm restricted. I'm in an actual poeng and it has me like, it just like hugs you and you, you really can't move all that much. It's so funny. And then also Ian has the camera shot a very specific way. Okay. So number 59, I've only had this card once and I love it. I've read it over and over, but let's see what it says. The essence is though angels, divine helpers, and ancient ones, and all varieties of luminous beings populate the upper world. It's a place where you go to retrieve your destiny and find out who you will become. Oh, it is also the place where spirits of the dead arrive when they complete their journey into the light. The invitation is the upper world is calling you to step into a fully realized self and um, checking back into our past and our past lives is part of that, right? Because instinctually we behave a certain way. Some people are just born leaders. Some people are excellent craftsmen. Some people are phenomenal hunters. Some people are tremendous builders. You know what I mean? And, and it's not necessarily always learned in this lifetime because we tend to follow patterns throughout centuries um, so do not fall into temptation to craft a slightly more improved version of yourself what you perceive as a problem or an obstacle in fact or as an irritation it means that you are taking a great leap remember you cannot cross the Grand Canyon in small jumps beautiful the upper world don't you love the artwork in this you're gonna hear crazy um, things going on and that's going to be um, the cats running around because they're all from hell and they never listen and they do whatever they want in this household. And sometimes they do stuff like they've almost, winter's almost knocked out the entire set. So I've been like, thank you for that experience. <laughs> Lovely one. So embrace spirit. So this is all about our spirit guides and spirit will talk to us about um, certain 
um, behaviors and certain journeys that we're now on and things will feel uncomfortable because it's karmic um, balances that we need to work through, right? So embrace spirit. When you get ringing in your ears and you see um, the same animals over and over, what you perceive as your spirit animals because they can change um, and you see them over and over on billboards and films and all those things, that that's what's happening. It's spirit trying to talk to you. So embrace it. Don't be frightened because sometimes I hear actual words. I hear actual stop the car, pull over, change the thing. And, that, and I believe that clear audience is through my mother and my aunt. I'll hear actual words, but our guides and angels are meant to be gentle and sort of maneuver us in a in a calm manner, not, you know, to be too abrupt because we'd all end up in mental institutions. It would be too much for us for sure. <laughs> so this was from your past, from your past life as well. The lady of the gift, generosity, receiving or withholding. So I feel like, yeah, too, you definitely had, where's your main... Yeah, definitely. I'm feeling like in your past life, one of your big things were a hunter and huntress on, on the plains um, in Native American um, things. So right now, yeah, I'm hearing that. I'm sorry, I was I was distracted by by a couple of things going on around me. That happens with our crazy household and our animals and things. So let's see. I love this so much. You see, I haven't, I don't think I've pulled this one yet, right? Yeah, so you definitely have a past. And I feel like we have lots of experiences. I remember, and I've been told also, I was a soldier in um, World War I. And I do have a, an intense fear of earth around me. Like I was in a foxhole or something for an extended period of time because I don't like to be in the earth. I, I don't mind sand or whatever. But like I remember when me and my brothers would dig stuff on the farm up in Maine and we'd be goofing around. I don't like packed earth around me. I feel like I had to stay in a foxhole for a long time. I was also told I was a prisoner of, of war. So I have a, oh, I freak out in confined spaces. You know, it's just part of your weirdo life. So let me see what's going on with this. Number 20. It's funny, the lights are so bright in this that there's like a strange glare and I can hardly see. Oh, there we go. I gotta go one more page. There we go. The Lady of the Gift. The Lady of the Gift brings a message of tithing. To be your ally, she requires you to look at the nature and method of your giving to others. The world is your church and, your own, and you only need to distribute 10% of your wealth to others to ensure the flow continues. Yet this doesn't necessarily mean giving money away, nor does it imply a Oh, a, a, a deficit in charity, even though the tradition of tithing is material. In fact, the kind of tithing the lady asks isn't, I'm going to just look down here because the, the light deflects off that. The kind of tithing the lady asks you isn't tangible or material at all. She's asking you to look at all human beings as important in the divine scheme of things and show others that you believe in them. Pay attention to how you treat people. Be mindful of your perception, even seemingly poor strangers. If you see others as successful and abundant and act as if you believe they have value, blessings all around are assured. Your belief in others has the greater value than you could fathom. This alone guarantees your success long term, remembering that you can only keep what you're willing to give. Oh, absolutely. hundred percent. Right. You ever, that's, that's why I have a hard time in New York with a, with a bunch of homeless people. Cause I literally start to feel that energy. And then I start to feel depleted because I like to think of people abundant, happy, healthy, strong. Um, you know, they don't have to have extreme wealth, of course. And that has its own disadvantages at times if people are unstable. It's all in the energy, right? And it's all in our perception. And that's why I love Jake Ducey's thing so much about, um, how we don't need, um, we don't need that old adage that, oh, the rich people are, are, are terrible, this and that, because money is an energy and we can share it again, tithing. When I started this too, I always said, you know, through donations, patronage or whatever, that I was always immediately going to give 10% away to other new readers. And um, I like to do that because I'm always going to support, always be generous of heart, right? I, I've never had lack mentality of money. Even when I had hardly any, I always felt abundant and very wealthy. And then your last card is the hermit. So that's saying too that um, I feel also in one of your past lives as well, 
that you had um, some sort of monk existence where you would go off and you would meditate alone like they did in the hills and you would go on soul searches and soul journeys and things like that. And we should do that nowadays too, those beautiful retreats that help us rebalance. Wow, you guys, so that's very interesting. So yeah, definitely um, Native American um, hunting. You were the hunter of the tribe. You had some... Um, uh, you were well revered. I also feel that you you had some um, like met like medicine women type of thing going on too, which is really nice. My kids are just all dancing around in the background. Hi, Andy. These pants are super loud. I know. So go away. And they're gonna start cooking in a minute. Okay. So that's you guys. Number one, if you're new, don't forget to press like and subscribe. And all my links are down below. If you need a private re read, check out the Patreon page. Um, everything's down there. Go check it out. The little gray era. Okay, so next is Hathor. Receptivity. Allow yourself to receive. Absolutely. That's big, right? And I'm talking not, not money and things like that. It's also about um, like compliments. You know, you don't want to throw some, a compliment back in someone's face. Always be gracious. Um, it's, it's like saying, I respect your opinion and what you think when you allow somebody to compliment you or give you a gift, right? We never rebuff a gift word or materially, right? It's It lacks grace and it lacks... Um, uh, gratitude. So let's see. It looks like you were a high priestess. Very cool. So yeah, um, and they were very highly, highly regarded and revered, especially in the temples. You know, they were they were given gifts daily and food and riches and um, you know, sort of like the Oracle of the Delphi and people like that. They they could lead entire nations and tribes. You know, because the the leaders and the um, the czars of the time, the um, goddesses, the living goddesses, um, uh, Cleopatra, all of them, they always went to the high priestesses um, for for guidance. And there were tons of omens and ways they would do it with birds and animals and blood sacrifices and things like that. So you definitely got to partake in that. And this backs that up in another sort of area of the sorcerer. The sorcerer is the same in the male aspect of it, where you do a lot of divining with bones. Um, that was a big thing. Runes for the um, Scandinavians, things like that, where you um, you would divine and you would help guide them into which times were auspicious for battle, for weddings, for um, for um, crowning of the new kings and Caesars, all the Caesars of Rome, they would always have these blood sacrifices and to see what, what was um, for the auspices and see what days were good for for what, right? So here's a message for you to challenge your perception. Yeah, and this is a time of year too where you sit back and you go, of course, why wouldn't we have past lives? Why wouldn't we have past experiences? We're, we're basically energy that filters into one life into another, right? So of course we do. So challenge that perception. Why would I ever question that? And, and then your other card is the Desert Prince. I'm not even, it's so funny. These lights just don't allow. So this is about um, survival and false promises. I'm going to read from the book to see what that is all about because I have never pulled that. Wow, 19. That's beautiful. False promises. That's one thing we need to, to learn in this day and age. Um, it took me a while. Like in my teens, I'd always be like, oh, sure, I'll go do that. I'll go do this and that. And then I, you know, don't say yes when you mean no. Tell people you'll get back to them. You don't You don't need to people please or say you're going to do something for somebody because they'll feel better instantly because in the long run, if you don't want to do it, then it creates a, a, a fracture later, right? Because you don't look true to your word. So never say yes right away to somebody. You don't owe anybody anything. It's your life. It's your time. Um, so just do with it what you will, but don't say yes when you mean no. So when you stumble upon the desert prince, you receive a gift. The plant life that exists in the desert environment is well defended, though, oh, is well defended and tough and succulent, even though it gets little or no water in spite of the external conditions. Extraordinary life can form and thrive. Yeah, the desert has some remarkable um, life forms, right? Be tough and have courage and dare to dream. No matter what the circumstances, it may seem to be a hard time, but not only will you survive, you will thrive in spite of the conditions you'll succeed. Dry spells are also true tests of faith and courage. Expect nothing less than what is in your most precious dreams and watch miracles manifest. Absolutely. Yeah. When you look at some of the conditions on earth, <clears throat> how people are able to live there, like desert life is, I love like the Arab lifestyle and how they live in tents and they make it so beautiful and it looks so um, glorious and rich in such a, a sparse area, right? 
nomads, the gypsies and their beautiful caravans. Absolutely. Okay, so let's see what's going on with them. And then also, I and I'm reading this as well as, um, you know, I feel like in the past life that there's there in the Celtic area and the um, Arthurian legend times and stuff too. You could have um, been partaking in that in like Merlin and all the folklore of back there were people that were involved in um, magic, right? So that is a definite possibility why you could have chosen that. And this one's about stargazer. Ooh. So yeah, definitely someone in the Nostradamus type of field back when, and I feel like it's way back before it was even like um, documented where you were, you were knowing that there was something else out there. What were these stars doing? They directed um, people that were seafaring people. They would follow the stars, um, the navigators of the ship. They used the stars to navigate. Um, and you had that capacity to understand that it was sort of like, a, a wonderful cosmic map, a cosmic map in which you could follow. And being an astronomer in the day was um, very highly revered and respected because you had answers that people knew nothing about. People didn't even know what the moon was, things like that. And you were, um, you were informed of that. Let's see what the council has to say. I love that card so much. That's number 11. Do, 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 do. I think these lights are just one iota a little too bright. So the council says, yeah, I kind of have to read this down there. The council are the luminous beings who hold the collective wisdom of humanity. They are the ones before whom you will do your life review when you cross into the world of spirit. A life review is when we place our good and our bad deeds on a divine scale and attempt to explain why we did not love, forgive, or dare as greatly as we might have. Know that their wisdom is available to you at all times when you live in a state of yes and an unconditional relationship with life. They remind you of your place around a sacred fire which has been reserved for you since the beginning of time. You will claim it when you own your inner wisdom. That's really beautiful. So again, too, yeah, and and then this also opens up the possibility of being in a tribal council clan. You know how there were always the elders, again, of um, the Native Americans, um, even in the in the time of um, the the clans that were way back in the hunters, um, they always had a council. There was always a wise council in most communities because they had to defer to people that had knowledge that they didn't. You know, the change of seasons, who was going to direct you where, um, what, where you were going to live geographically, why that would be safe for you, um, how to follow the animals and feed the clans and tribes. Absolutely. And the astronomers were part of that as well because they were guided by the stars. Seek your destiny. So this card is a reminder saying that, you know, we do follow patterns throughout the centuries in our lives. And sometimes we're relegated to um, uh, chieftains over and over. We're relegated to um, people can be relegated to peasants over and over, hardworking laborers, all those things. And, and then karmic lessons are learned because lots of times we we travel in tandem with our other ancestors. Right. So we tend to um, follow patterns. Um, definitely. Yeah, I feel I feel that's great. So seeking your destiny. So when you look really deep within yourself and you go, what what skill sets do I have that are, are bizarre? You know what I mean? Like sometimes I, I look at my friends. I remember one time me and me and um, one of my friends were talking about things and we started laughing and I was like um, he was looking for a girlfriend. I said, well, you can't be ridiculous. You can't have somebody that is, you know, set your sights. It is like ridiculously gorgeous, smart, artistic, um, funny. Um, esoteric, all those things you like. It was like a whole list, good at sports, this, that, and the other thing. And then he started laughing. I was like, what are you laughing at? He's like, you can do all that stuff. And I thought, well, yeah, but, but that's because I have so many brothers and I wanted to keep up with them. But the more I thought about it, I'm like, why, how would I know some of the stuff I know? Like I know, and it's weird because it, it does travel in my family, like archery. My oldest brother, Wendell was superb and he had more, um, uh, trophies and stuff in his room than I'd ever seen in my life. And I was like, it was just a natural progression. And my son likes it as well. Just some of these things, you know, and people say, well, that's in your gene pool and this and that. But, but when you really think about it, how far back can this stuff date, right? It can go centuries and centuries. We learn these skill sets when we, when we learn them. Ooh, look at this card, the dragon's duel. 
I've not only never pulled this, but it must have been stuck to another card in the deck because I've never seen it. So I'm very excited to see what the book says on that. That's really cool. You guys also do me a favor and comment if you're afraid of snakes because I don't get that fear at all. I've never been afraid of snakes when they go over my feet. Ever since I've been young, spiders, yes, snakes, no. But some people have this crazy fear of them. And tell me why. Is it because they're um, reptilian or what it is? Because people get so freaked out by it. So the dragon's duel takes place at the proverbial fork in the road. It's both ally and challenger at once. And it represents the tension of opposites. Even though the truth is when we live in unity, we experience the duality of faith and doubt, love and fear, right and wrong, black and white. This aspect of your current experience asks you to accept that although you may be going one way, another may call you to go and change direction. Now is the time to inquire whether your ego or your soul is leading you. Yes, ego. Remember we talked about this yesterday and that's edging God out. That is Colette's fantastic. And this is her book too. Um, the ego is just so destructive in its force because it's always telling us get more, do more, be more, compare yourself to others. Are you good enough? You're too big. You're too small. You're this, that. The ego never stops seeking attention. So we really need to um, not listen to it at all because it just wants and wants and wants and wants and it's never satisfied and it doesn't have gratitude so it can piss off see you later <laughs> piss off ego i get so when i deal with people that are completely ego driven i just walk away because there's no it's like beating your head up against the wall people that just always revert to their ego they just they're it's so soul vacant when you go into that realm that I don't have time for it. So whenever you hear that voice going, oh, you can't, you, you're not this, you're not that. No, right away, it's ego. Recognize it and take it away because it is EGO is edging God out. I love when Colette said that. I was like, that's exactly what it is. So now it's a time to, um, to inquire whether your ego or your soul is leading you. There are always choices in life. Decision making also involves inner conflict. If you're torn between two dragons, the one that you choose to feed will be the one that wins. Absolutely, right? You're going to feed your ego and always want more and always be desperate and always be hating and always thinking the grass is greener and always trying to keep up with the Joneses and always trying to um, get attention, look better, be better. Um, and it, it, that creates a false reality as well. You can see it on Instagram quite often when everybody's always jumping out of airplanes in Dubai with their perfect lip gloss and all that. There's a, a relative lack of um, normalism about that. You know what I mean? Because it ups the game for poor people that just want to express themselves and share their lives and they feel like they never measure up because these other people are trying to be so bigger and better and appear one way when literally they, a lot of them just live out of hotel rooms. I've watched them and, and seen them on this, this show I just started watching. And, um, and it was sad because people, um, they, they live a vacuous and sad existence when that happens. I had the timer set and I'm like halfway done. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll do this quick in 20 minutes. I'm like, yeah, not. Because this this is a big one and it is important. Oh, look at this. And the queen of cups. And yeah, and also in your in your past lives too, you definitely had a position of royalty and you you did it extremely well. Like on, on a Guinevere level where you were gracious and you wanted to make sure everybody was fed and housed and the animals were cared for and your boundaries were protected, that you had strong allies, that you had the you inter um um, you know, what you had to marry the right countries and the right suitors to the right family members. Um, I feel like these people too were definitely in the, um, the Borgia family. Uh, you know, I, I see, I see Italy, I see popes, I see all these things in the Borgia family where there are all these, um, inter intermixed things in the Crizia Borgia and um, yeah, they, they would actually kill suitors that, that weren't, um, applicable because they weren't going to give you the dowry that was required. There was a lot of harshness involved in the day for sure. Um, if you weren't up to par, they'd just kill you. They'd kill you if they didn't think you were going to, um, amply supply the family with what they needed. You, you were quickly disposed of for sure. There was a harshness to that. They were like, Oh, I'm sorry. There's not enough treasure in that treasure chest. You've got to go to the bottom of the Red Sea. See you later. <laughs> so let's see who's next. This is going to be double double the time. So I'm glad I remembered to, to stop that. Yeah, sometimes when you think back, like history and um, uh, ancient times are always some of my favorite things, especially how 
um, like in the day, I, I was always surprised how cheap life was if you weren't in a certain certain like household literally you your life could be over if you were a slave household in any of the roman nobilities it was like you were so disposable if you were a, um a gaul that was um taken from from france it was like basically your life was just it just you know they could just do anything with you and it's so bizarre to think of that in this day and age right so let's see then oh so that's you guys yeah th- yeah, I have to apologize if this seems a little like I'm skipping. The The way I'm situated, I have two bright cameras like right in my eyes. So it's a little bit blinding. I'm going to have to have Ian turn them down after. Because it's a bit much and I can't see so great. So that's you guys. If you're new, don't forget to press like and subscribe and, and the notification bell too. So you'll know when all the new videos come up. Um, if you press the little gray arrow in the bottom right, then all the links will come up for my Etsy store. Because I put these up last night because I knew you guys wanted some Christmas crowns and I sold all the rest of them. So yeah, I have all the... Um, fun Christmas stuff up there. Um, my instant go, if you need a quick answer, just everything, all the links are down below there. So go check it out. And also the Patreon page, we're putting up some fun stuff there. We're getting the Oracle cards up there. So it's very exciting. So let's see. Next, next message is, again, if you guys are just um, popping on, it's about past lives and how it affects you now. Vesta is about the home. Your household situation is improving, either through a move or a healthy change in occupants. So this can happen, this can happen quite often, right? Um, life can become a little stagnant and we get set in subconscious habits we don't even know we're doing. Sometimes it takes as little change as a new pet, right? To be, to understand and have gratitude for who's in there because people, people and animals carry energy with them, right? So if you have the right energy mix, sometimes it only takes one strong, lovely household member to be the glue, to raise everybody up, keep them happy, keep them occupied because it comes straight from their heart. That's not, it's... To be a lot of times a good parent, you have to have a lot of selflessness because you have to always put your children, your animals first. Yes, you can be hungry, but they should, you should make sure they have their food. You should make sure there's heat in the house, all of that, right? I get a little um, disheartened when I see moms dressed to the ultimate nines in grocery stores, yet their kids are in rags. It, it's, it, it's very odd and I don't understand why that happens. So um, we all need to be a good structure for the family unit you know you isn't it nice when you come home like your cats your dogs whatever your animals run up to greet you right if it's ever the opposite you need to ask yourself what's going on if you walk in your front door and your animals and your household run away from you maybe a closer look needs to be taken there (laughs) what happened over there so this is some of your energy wow a shaolin master be graceful in movement and action so this could have been yeah in tibetan temples in the time of all the shaolin monks and their practices and their regimes were very very strict so if you have a very organized um way about you and you have very measured movements and you're very agile very um balanced you're very good at sports um very fluid in your movements that could be part of your past life training as a shaolin master i've always been super attracted to martial arts and um like jackie chan i loved him when i was younger too and watched all this stuff because it almost seemed inhuman to me and bruce lee too he's my ultimate favorite how these people could move in such fluid well balanced and powerful ways right it's amazing it's so funny the girls in the kitchen trying to cook quietly so if you hear weird stuff going on that's faith in india trying to cook their breakfast the time master let's see what's going on with him i remember when i first saw this i was like that looks exactly like my uncle barry it was so funny let's see what's going on but the art in this i um uh i'm doing a couple extra cards for our oracle deck and um I find I'm so drawn to this palette and these colors and that flow of things, like things that just look feathery and beautiful and soft. It's amazing. I love it. So I hope you guys are getting ready for Christmas and everything in order and don't have any stress over it. You know what I mean? It's just like go with the flow. Don't take things so seriously. And again, we're not being ego driven, right? We're not trying to get the bigger, better gift for somebody so we get the pow reaction, right? Who cares? Something from the heart is much more important than something that is costly, um, that's that's not um, where we're trying to come from, right? Time is a construct of the human mind through which life events are seen to flow in a straight line from past to future. This, however, is an illusion. Time moves in patterns, fractals, sometimes turning like a wheel and others moving straight as an arrow. The invitation is when the time master visits you, he asks you the most important question. Will you break free from limited cause and effect thinking by moving beyond the linear illusion and welcoming the cyclical quality of time? 
You ever just have a moment where you feel like the day goes by in an hour and then you have other days when you're doing things that you don't really like all that much and it seems like a 20 year day? Yeah, that's that's cyclical movement because you're in your own time frame, you're in your own zone and when you're doing what you love, um, it's crazy. I literally feel like I stopped working a week ago at a job that I hated because now that I'm doing what I love in my life's purpose, it, it has, go there's no, there's no, um, time frame for me. It's very weird. Each day passes so quickly that I'm like, where did the time go? So this is the true test of the time master. You're being invited to take back your power. So let go of the past and choose to step into your life. In this moment, you are all powerful. You are the time master. Anything is possible now. Absolutely. Remember when we always discuss how we're limitless, how we can do anything, how we are um, able to um, progress down any road we want by just having, um, the understanding that we, that there is no limits to us. Once we decide, you know, that we're beautiful energy and we just want to flow, respect your boundaries. This is a big thing I've been reading for the, the, the last couple of days, especially with people, um, that are newly on the dating scene. Um, if you don't want to do something or, eat something or go somewhere or be with someone, just let it be known. Don't waste your time and don't be people pleasing because when we say yes to things we mean to say no with, we act against our, our natural grain. We act, we act against our natural soul purpose and we, it, it creates an irregularity, it creates a fracture in how we behave. So we really need to be true to ourselves. And I'm not saying be rude in the middle of the date and be like, peace out, loser. Charlie Brown, I got to go. You look ridiculous and I'm not putting up with this. You know what I mean? You ever, you're having a conversation with somebody and then it turns left and they're either like racist, insane or whatever, loud, um, ego driven, and you just don't want to put up with it. You can graciously just bow out, you know, say, excuse me, I'm not feeling well. You don't have to tell them they're the one that made you feel that way, but you just, Exit, peace out, gotta go. Set those boundaries and people step over them. So listen, if we all have skill sets, right? So we have people, places, and things that rely on us. We all have skill sets. I make some rather cool jewelry and I've been in play, I've been in instances where people have taken advantage of that. Like coworkers, I brought them something and I'd be wearing something and I actually had a coworker say, this is nice, but I really like what you're wearing. Immediately, I knew what that was all about. That was someone who didn't wasn't a gracious person coming from a place of grace. It was basically just someone who was um, out for themselves and grasping and ungracious. So right away when I recognized that, I was like, well, that's that's nice that you like it. I made this too. Thank you very much. But it's like they expect you to just give them the shirt off your back because they asked for it. A person that deserves a shirt off your back will never ask for it. And we know that, right? So the next card is Sisters of the Seasons, Cycles of Growth, Natural Law, and the Divine Order. Look how beautiful that is, Sisters of the Season. Ooh, I'm going to read that too. This is one, this really, you guys, if you can only spring for like one or two decks this season, Wisdom of the Hidden Realms, that's where these come from. They're very beautiful. Um, they're so touching. The writing is Oh, it's just, it, it strikes a note, right? It makes a lot of sense. When the sisters of the seasons meet you on your path, they remind you that everything has a natural rhythm that obeys the higher law. Just as the seasons magically pass, be reminded that nature of birth, growth, harvest, and decay cannot be altered. So if you keep on your path with the determination and discernment, allowing the natural course of events to unfold, success is assured, right? We're not trying to hang on too long. We're realizing there is fallow, there is, um, there's the harvest, there's the fallow, everything has a season, right? Um, yeah, that we, we, we release it and we, we allow for the new because like we're always discussing, um, the universe abhors a vacuum. It's going to instantly refill it with something. So when we allow the release of old loves, of old patterns, of things that don't serve us anymore, the new comes in, the new brighter, the new fresh. That's why the snakes have to shed their skins, right? There, there's a very um, precarious interim with that because they're delicate. But however, once they have their new skin, they're able to move more, more free, freely, right? We have to allow for that shedding of the skin. For others, oh yeah. Yes, for the new love and the lovers. So also, um, I feel that you have a karmic reconnection or a, a new soul connection coming up with somebody who has been in your past and you've experienced a life with that you have been able to, um, you know, spend a fair parcel of time with this person and go through a lifetime of um, bearing and having children together and a family. I almost feel like the... 
the roles were reversed. If you were male, you are now female and vice versa, because that is a karmic gift that's allowed to us. If we've gone through a lifetime as a male or a female, and we want to experience the full realm of everything, we can come back as the opposite and this person is coming back around and you recognize them instantly. You know who your soul brothers and sisters are. You feel immediately at home with them. And it's a lovely, lovely, um, blissful experience. So that's you guys. Amazing. That is really wonderful. I love that. Again, remember, yeah, respecting your boundaries. The Time Master is such a great card, right? So that's you guys. If you're new, don't forget to press like and subscribe and the notification bell so you'll know when all the new videos are up. Um, if you press the little gray arrow on the bottom right-hand corner, all my links come up for my private reads, for the Etsy store. Everything's in there. The crowns and everything. Um, yeah, and if you need a quick um, answer, I'm on Instant Go. So go have a look at that. Thank you very much. If you're new, welcome to the channel. We have a lot of fun here. And that's you guys. So now we're on to the last one. And this is Kali. I love, love the um, Eastern goddesses. Endings and beginnings. The old must be released so that the new can enter. You know, nothing is true or said with that. You know, um, so many people are saying... Um, I'm trying to manifest this new love. I'm trying to manifest this new job. But uh, ask yourself truly, have you released that old partner? Are you still carrying around that weight of hurt, resentment, or anything like that? Because you can't fill an already full cup, okay? So you need to empty that cup and allow for the new to come in, right? That's what that's all about. Okay, so somebody did you wrong at some point, but do you... Do you, do you want to poison the well with all those bad feelings and have it just keep recirculating around in your system when you can just release it and be light and happy and optimistic for the new to come in, right? Because that's the vibration and the law of attraction, right? So yeah, definitely another one from a past life, an oracle, oracle of the Delphi oracle. Um, I see um, beautiful old white um, churches and things where uh, you again you were a diviner you would you would do all kinds of things you would read the tea leaves you um you would do the ancient runes uh, lots of divinations and i just saw an interesting article um actually i i watched this particular show about um the Len the lenormand um tarot it was back in the day when um um ch -ch -ch Benedict had worked for Napoleon as one of his um, generals and he went in and he went into um, Lenormand's house because she was a famous psychic and tarot reader and she had her own cards and he he had lied to her and said I'm a businessman and I want to know about this opportunity and her the first card that she picked was the um, Knight of Swords and she said well no you're not actually you're a um, soldier and she told him about his life and then when he told her the truth about wh what he did and who he worked for, she pulled the death card, obviously for Napoleon. And then she pulled the king of um, wands card, I believe. And Benedict actually, um, starting in French origins, became the king of Sweden later. So she had um, divined this knowledge for him. And some of her decks are out here now and 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 she had renowned fame in the day back in the 1800s of France. And that's where the Lenormand... Um, cards come from. So I feel it's one of those existences that you had. You were a, a very prolific um, diviner with all kinds of things. You used the runes, you used bones, you used all the ancient meth um, methodologies that were able to um, portend the futures for very high people in the military and of um, of the of noble ranking France all over Europe and things like that and you were very highly regarded and these people were bought brought gifts of like uh, of um intense value like treasure troves and stuff because they were thank yous and and fresh fruit and things like that flowers and magic that was part of that was part of who you were your magic when people believe that they are limitless and they can see into other places it's exactly what happens because we all have extrasensory perceptions but it takes a time it takes a tour a lot of people need um near-death experiences because that alters the brain and how we see things and when we realize that life is such a gift then we delve in deeper to how things are mine pretty much started when my dad died on christmas day and i said well this could absolutely crush me because i was so attached to him but i was like Okay, so we're back. I need a timeout because I did have a flashback at a time where I had to clean porta potties. 
<laughs> and I didn't like it. <laughs> now, sometimes when I think of my dad, I just start crying because I love him so much, Mr. Warren Whitaker. But again, the magic card that is that you can tap into that because our ancestors are what guides us. And a lot of times I've told you guys that my life, a lot of times had very precarious things on the road and I would hear things stop, get off there, do this, do that. And it was definitely my mom's voice because usually it's always in pitches and um, frequencies, but sometimes you will hear an actual voice and don't be afraid because it's all just energy. And lots of times it comes through electricity and things like that and animals. So if we're paying attention, we see the magic and you are very very able to do that and I feel like too that you had a close affinity with animals and that's a source you know birds have a, a type of um, extreme magic to them they they like there I forgot what they there's a certain chemical in your brain that actually helps you geographically and the homing pigeon has the most of this chemical and that's why they're able to um, find divine where they're supposed to go right i was always like how does that animal do that that's insane it's going across the waters to a place it's never been to deliver a message and then come back with another message think about that if that's not natural magic in the animal kingdom i don't know what is and you were definitely able to tap into that and that was a source of safety to people in the day because um we didn't have cell phones right we weren't able to call up egypt and be like yo tut what's up you know what I mean? You needed all kinds of birds and things. Is this, and see the signs. You were able to see the signs and read the signs. And a lot of times the changing aspect of the weathers and things like that and when to gather the crops to be able to feed people and all that, you were able to read those signs. When there were storms coming, you understood electrical um, vibrations in the air that were um, um, purporting snow, rains, um, cyclones, weird, weird um, shifts of energy and... Um, the weather that could be deadly right and that's held in high regard you would save people their abodes where they lived you would save the animals the flocks the herds all those things because you'd get them to safety in time and I, I feel that you actually you some of you people that are builders now you knew how to develop cellars and like almost like in the pueblo type of thing where you had cements and things that were um really house things safely and um you would build um, secure inner structures to them. That's really wonderful. I'm going to read this one first, too. Oh, very nice. And the Queen of Wands. Wow, yes. So again, yeah, you were a, a leader, and I feel like you worked in tandem with queens and kings, and they relied on you heavily for all your gifts. You know what I mean? Because... Another thing I'm hearing, poisons, you were a diviner of, you were head healing, you knew what could um, work against the ramifications of poisons and dispel them and counteract them. And you could also detect them because certain things had gave off a scent and you would, you would be next to the kings and queens and you would smell for the scent and touch them. You knew you would add other chemical elements into it and it would react with it and you would know what that was. So yeah, you were definitely, you protected people from poison in the day too. Rome was notorious with poisoners and um, murder ran damn rampant up in that place for sure. Yeah, I would not, that is one time frame I would not want to live in. It was very um, dog eat dog and cutthroat. Yeah, especially if you're part of the royal households. Um, people, yeah, if they didn't agree with your politics, poison, poison, and it was very, life was very cheap. You could hire anybody to murder you. It was a very murdery place, and I don't think I would like it. No. And your next thing is the resting tree, patience and stillness. Well, let's see what that's about. I love trees. Trees are, uh, if you got, if you ever feel like you need to ground, just go out and touch a tree, hug a tree. It's so grounding. I feel like I can breathe better when I just talk about trees. You know what I mean? I'm not an inside person. I'm a Sagittarius, so I actually get pissed when I have to stay in too long. I start to feel um, cagey. I just love, love, love nature. And I feel like we're going to go out for a walk. It's very foggy where I live right now. It's very weird. Okay, so the resting tree is about patience and stillness. The resting tree is a sign for you to stop focusing and planning and be at peace in the moment. This is a representative of non-action and relaxation. Oh, I love that idea, right? Non-action and relaxation. Patience is the key to this with this ally. The resting tree asks you to slow down. Sit back and watch the roses bloom and the birds feed in the meadow. This isn't a time to forge ahead in any way. 
Um, remember to take enough breaks so you're invited to be still and contemplate your good fortune, even if it means blessings, blessing the chaos in your life. Like my life is totally chaos. It's so crazy with the animals and the children and um, the jewelry. One day, I, I promise you, I'll film around my room and you'll go, it's a fairy orgy in here. It's crazy. There's glitter. There's jewelry. There's beads. There's crowns. There's boas. Like there's things like this everywhere. Like I love this thing. This is not, I don't use real fur, but I have just crazy eclectic taste and it looks nuts. So, so embrace the chaos. And I do. And it's funny because Ian's very organized and it blows his mind and he doesn't like all that stuff around and he'll organize. And I'm like, you can't put jewelry in the makeup bin, in the fur bin, in the, like, he'll just start to, he's, Nobody touches my tarot cards. So when he touches them and starts to pile them all hodgepodge, I'm like, it's on. I'm like, I'm serious. I will go off with his head with that. The poor thing. He was so scared this morning. I was like, I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, uh, -uh organizing. I'm like, stop that immediately. <laughs> when the resting tree appears, it signals that you've done all you can for now. And it's time to unwind and allow your story to unfold of its own accord. You've earned the right to rest and relax. Amazing ideas will come if you do. Remember the ancient saying, we do without doing and everything gets done. Absolutely. And that's with the old adage too of we have all the time in the world. When we remind ourselves we have all the time in the world, we're not rushing to do a lot. And what is it? What are we trying to do? Sometimes it's better to just be. Just feel, be in the moment, listen to your heart space, listen to your intuition, listen to your head. That's where the magic comes for, for this group right here. You know, you don't have premonitions. You're not in touch with the earth if you're racing around, right? We need to slow our roll. That's why um, people needed to, um, in the day, they, and still they go to the the sweat lodges and the places that have you be still and in the moment so you can disregard all the outer chatter and just get into the place of your interior where the answers come from, right? And that's you guys. Amazing. So yeah, you were definitely, you were the magic ones. You were the Merlins. Ooh, Merlin. I love it. I love magic. Magic is so everywhere. So again, you guys, thank you. If you're new, don't forget to press like and subscribe and all my links are down below. Also hit the notification bell so you know when the new videos are up. Um, if you hit the little gray arrow in the bottom right, all my links will come up for private reads, for my Patreon page. There's crows outside my window now. For the Patreon page, um, for anything you could want, the Etsy store, the crowns will be in there, all the jewels and all the Christmas stuff. And, um, Again, I let everybody know too. Feel free to email me if you have an issue. I, I um, help some young people, and I am. Um, if you ever feel like you're you're not heard where you live in your family, and you ever just want a little bit of advice, feel free to email me. I'm always going to get back to you, and that's that's my true calling. You know, I love you guys. Is just to be here and figure stuff out. I'll do research for you. I'll find the best way. Most things I learn, I learn so I can turn around and teach it. So I learn it as a teacher. So I can turn around and have it in layman's terms and help you. You know what I mean? Because I can find out shit. I got the power. I'll find out stuff for you. If you don't have time and you're restricted and you're having issues, I'm almost 50 years old. I've lived a, a long and interesting life. I've lived in Europe. I've lived here. I've lived in the islands. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff. And I understand some things because I'm going to be a lifelong learner and I always keep the beginner's mind. You know, I don't, I don't think I know everything. Whenever I hear anybody say anything, I want to know what that is. I start from the beginning from square one. There's always new medical procedures. There's always new methods to magic and madness and everything that goes on in the world. And, um, the key is to have an open heart and mind and to learn it. And I'm here for you guys. So just let me know. Well, I love you guys. I love you, love you, love you. And thank you, Colette, for creating all these beautiful cards. Your magic. She's just like, I don't think I would be where I am or want to do as much as I do if it weren't for Colette Baron Reed because her her voice speaks to me and her cards speak to me. And I feel like they take me on the journey to help you guys the best possible way to. You guys are the best. And I love you. So I've got to go because I'm blinded by these lights and I can't see anymore. So I do.